The title of this solo podcast is The Final Frontier of the Superhuman. So you, you've accomplished all that you've wanted to accomplish. You've made millions or billions of dollars, or you've achieved the pinnacle in your craft. You've become world famous. You've accumulated more wealth than you know what to do with. So in every regard, you are deemed amongst the super successful, the superhumans of society. So the question that I have now for you is now what you know there's a lot of years left to live we don't know how many years there are but there uh, certainly could chances are there are are many years left how are you going to fill that time i think this is a question that um perhaps not consciously but at least subconsciously plagues many individuals who have achieved uh, great things in their life and now are stricken by boredom and by listlessness and not really knowing what to do. Uh, many, many people, it, it is shocking to me, uh, many of the, the superhumans um, in Silicon Valley and, and elsewhere, when they were when they were creating their own craft, when they were making their own art, they did everything their own way. Um, and when they achieved what they wanted to achieve, or at least mostly what they wanted to achieve, uh, they then delved into this thing called spirituality and in self-optimization and self-development and self-improvement. And when they delve into that arena, uh, they they went completely against their own principles. They went against their own grain. Um, whereas in their craft, they didn't listen to anybody. They did things uh, according to what their instincts told them. When they delved into the world of self-development and spirituality, they began to listen to the so-called uh, experts, experts, the traditionalists, and they did everything that they never did in the creation of their own great craft. That's that's actually the, the norm, and it's very puzzling to me why uh, humans would do that, why superhumans would do that in particular. Um, you know, they, they follow the traditions of the 20 minutes a day of meditation, and they're going to... Uh, the silent retreats and the reading of books and and all the you know human beings love to subscribe to fashions so that they can show off uh, so that they can demonstrate how intelligent they are by saying that I've, I've read 20 books and how many have you read you know it's the new fashion statement as to how many books that you've read and how many silent retreats that you've been to and that you're this new age and progressive sort of individual who is um, who is you know, going above the mainstream by delving into Indian spirituality because it makes you somewhat cultured or it, or you believe that it optimizes you. And, and quite frankly, I, I think that's sort of silly. I think that's beneath the DNA of the superhuman. If the superhuman was going to be um, a true artist in his own domain, then why should he succumb to the status quo in any domain that he touches? So if he is truly serious about so-called spirituality and self-development, then the first thing that he'll do is is begin to approach it in the, in the way that is similar to the way that he approaches his own craft by debunking all of the nonsense before he accepts one single word. But it doesn't seem to be that way. It seems that when, um, you know, great people from other domains come to this world, they seem to fall hook, line, and sinker for the traditions and the status quo, and they hire a meditation instructor with a ponytail uh, and a uh, and an, English, and an, and an Eastern accent, 
and they begin to you know change their name to some indian name and chant and they think they're getting somewhere and that's very much of going through the motions if you truly want to get somewhere if you want to become serious then let's talk let's talk about that right now uh, so in all these years that you, that you have left what are you going to do um, are you going to meditate them all away hope hopefully become a little bit more peaceful a little bit more happy a little less conflict in your relationships so everything is very menial everything is two percent this and five percent this and all this nonsense that you're taught well, what, well if you're going to if you're ultimate in your own craft, then why do you succumb to nonsense in these other things? So if you are going to be serious about it, then get, get serious. So let's talk seriously about that. Um, ask any of your meditation instructors if they can turn off their thought at will. Ask them that. I didn't say if they can meditate. I didn't say if they can practice mindfulness and all this silly nonsense, drivel. See, can you turn off your thoughts at will? Can you switch off your mind when you want when you want to turn it off? Do you have the ability to say to your mind, you can now speak and now you must stay quiet and your mind listens to you? Do, when emotion gets to you, are you able to understand that that emotion has nothing whatsoever to do with you? Not intellectually, but viscerally, organically, naturally. Has that arisen within you? Have you have you cult, have you cultivated the understanding that the things that you read in books actually you can discover by reading yourself by going deep inside yourself and then you can know anything and everything because all of nature's secrets are embedded within you rather than rather than reading 400 word, 400 pages or something that can be said in a paragraph and a half and yet so that you can go to two cocktail parties and brag about how you've read 15 books this year you know it's it's all it's all social posturing that's all this is you know if you're serious then get serious don't find a meditation instructor find out what exactly it is that you want find out what exactly is the outer limits of possibility for you, then you're actually getting somewhere. And you're not getting somewhere so that you can say that you got somewhere. It actually changes the complexion of your entire life experience. Um, the mind is a complete illusion. It creates nothing but illusion. And all of one's reality is created by this mind. Now, when someone hears that, when the so-called tradition follower hears that, the tradition following superhuman, hears that, he will then delve further into intellect so that he can have, quote, intelligent conversations with his peers in order to demonstrate how much he knows. So he'll ask questions like, what is consciousness? And what is the best way to practice mindfulness? And is all of this a simulation? And, and, and how is it that you can um, pursue life extension? And all of these these pseudo intellectual nonsense. It's just jargon. No one's real, none of these people are really interested in really getting anywhere. The most fundamental of which is can you turn off involuntary thought? That is an absolute superpower. And it isn't just to have the superpower, it is that when involuntary thought is turned off, one arrives at the truth. One's like all the things that one is seeking through these meditations and mindfulnesses and all of these ponytail type, you know, chasing of the eastern, eastern tree is all of these things come for free without effort. If one is truly sincere, if one truly wants to get somewhere, as opposed to wear the shiny, you know, the, the, the orange robe and to light the incense and, and, you know, all of the, the fashion trends of the, quote, spiritual world. If you're truly serious, you actually have the DNA as a superhuman to then turn that DNA in this direction so that you can cultivate and discover what the truths really are the same way that you discovered them in your own profession, which is why you became legendary in your own profession. So why would you, why would you acquiesce? Why would you bow down uh, to the status quo and, and the, the common thinking? if you never did that in your own profession. You know, that happens a lot in golf as well. You see executives who are absolutely world-class and they come to golf and they, and they hire a golf instructor to tell them where to put their left arm, how to stand, how tall to put their, make their posture, 
what the first move away with the swing is, and they spend 30 years and never get anywhere. And I've always been fascinated that, that, that you're the person who went against everything in your own domain, and yet you come and you fall for the traditions and the culture when you were a complete anti-culturalist in your own profession, which is why you became great. Why do you think it's any different in anything else? Every culture is smitten and saturated by trivial ideas, regurgitated concepts and nonsense. It is not based upon truth. So if you're going to study as a superhuman, if you're going to delve into the world of so-called spirituality, um, then pursue it from the standpoint of mind. Discover what it is that you really want. Discover what it is, where it is that you want to arrive, not what you want to practice so that you can show off and demonstrate how much you practice. You know, get serious. The same way that you were serious in your own profession, become serious here because the same things that you would not listen to in your own profession are the same things that are going on here. The mind is a uh, is the sort of final frontier that space could not hope uh, to match. This mind creates for us the entire reality that we believe to be true. And because we believe to be believe it to be true, these beliefs have consequences, and our entire life, our actions are based upon the beliefs that the things that we hear and that we think and that we are told are true. And that is a massive departure from reality, which is exactly why we suffer from emotional turmoil and sadness and depression and sorrow and uh, endlessly chasing the mythological idea of happiness, which it does not exist. There is no happiness. The only reason the idea of happiness even exists is because misery is everything. If there was no misery, there would be no happiness. So happiness is a, is a concocted idea that is uh, created in as a reaction to misery. And the reason that misery exists, because the truth is not known. Whenever the truth is not known, then what is known in place of the truth are concepts. And these concepts are heavily flawed. And because they're heavily flawed, acting upon them creates confusion. Confusion creates failure. Failure creates sadness. This creates a destruction of relationships. This creates a, a massive hole in seeing what is really there. It saps one's clarity. So truth, peace, clarity, insight uh, leads to dispassion. Um, it leads to a person who is untouched by no matter what happens to him. That's a holy grail, that regardless of what may happen to you, you are unaffected. If you choose to be affected, you may be. If you choose not to be, you are not. That is becoming truly, in, coming truly into one's own. That is becoming a true superhuman, not just in one's craft, but in this final frontier. This is a This is worth devoting a lifetime to. So the superhuman, if you're listening... Be superhuman in all things, not just in the craft that you pursued. And understand that if you come to a new domain that you know very little about, that virtually everything that you hear will be wrong, the same way it was wrong in your own profession. Be serious. Get somewhere. The mind is truly the final frontier. Good night.